God wants to change you. Not only does he want to change you, but he is changing you. And you need to understand that change is a process. It's a lifelong journey. Just the other day, I got upset with myself. There were some traits I was not happy about. Traits that I thought would be easy to overcome. And to be honest, traits I thought would be long gone. But I need to be patient as God does his work. And yes, there is a part for me to play, but it is God who does the changing. He wants you and me to become a new person, more like Jesus. And this can only happen out of your relationship with Jesus. The more time you spend with him, the more you love him, the more you'll become like him. We see this truth in his word. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So, like I said, I was frustrated with my flaws and felt hopeless. I wondered if I would experience the complete change this scripture was talking about. Is change really possible for me, even though I have struggled with some traits for years and years? That is what I asked myself. And that is when I came across the story of Zacchaeus again. I know the story, but I was so encouraged reading it again. Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and he was not the most popular person in town. Because of his work, he probably cheated people and stole from them. But one day Jesus came to town and Zacchaeus climbed a tree with the hope he would get to see Jesus. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. Luke chapter 19 verses 5 to 6. Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was in a tree and called him by name. When that happened, the people around him were not happy because they knew the kind of man Zacchaeus was. They couldn't believe how Jesus could spend time with him out of all people. But we read of something amazing that happened to Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded any one of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Luke chapter 19 verses 8 to 10. As Zacchaeus spent time with Jesus, there was an immediate visible change that happened. From being the man who stole and cheated, he gave half of all his goods to the poor and restored money he had stolen four times over. It was a miracle that only Jesus could do. Zacchaeus didn't change on his own. It was because of Jesus that he was changed into a new man. Allow the Lord to do his work in you. If we could change ourselves, then we wouldn't need Jesus. But when you have a love relationship with God, the first thing that changes is you. God wants to make you more like Jesus. In Christ, we become new people. The old is gone. The new is here. This happens in Christ, that is, in relationship with Jesus. As we know Him, love Him, follow Him, and live in Him, the relationship is first, then the newness follows. When you connect with God, it should change you. If you grabbed a live electrical wire, would something happen to you? It definitely would. In the same way, you should expect something to happen to you when you meet the Almighty God. That's what happened with Jacob when he wrestled with the angel of the Lord. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, 
he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Genesis chapter 32, verses 25 to 28. Jacob came away with a permanent limp and a new name. He was a different man. And that is what God does. He changes us and makes us new. He wants to give you a new life. I heard a saying that I loved. It says, You can't follow Jesus and stay where you are. You change. You become a new person. I love that. Let God change you into a new creation. The change won't be immediate because it is a process. It's a journey and one you need to be patient on. Let's pray. King Jesus, we know that it is you who changes us. This is your work and we cooperate. We understand our cooperation is essential, but at the end of the day, it is you who changes us. Forgive us for treating Christianity like a self-help tool. We see the areas we need change and we bring them to you. Help us to become more like you. Holy Spirit, we need you desperately. In your word, it declares, and we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Lord, it's your Holy Spirit who is changing us from the inside out. We surrender to you. We stop trying to change in our own strength and wisdom. Instead, we surrender to you. Change us, Lord, into the men and women you want us to be, to be more like you. Your word says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. We thank you for the new hearts you have given us, hearts that are sensitive to your voice and responsive to your leading. We declare that our old hardened hearts are gone, and we are renewed and softened by your spirit. Lord, we are grateful that you do not leave us as we are, but are constantly at work in us. Your word assures us, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. We thank you for creating us anew in Christ Jesus and for preparing good works for us to walk in. We declare that we are your masterpieces, being shaped and molded into the likeness of your Son. Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of abiding in you. You said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. John chapter 15 verse 5 We declare that we are abiding in you, and as we do, we bear much fruit. Apart from you, we can do nothing, but with you, we are fruitful and effective. Holy Spirit, we welcome your work in our lives. We thank you that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. 
We declare that these fruits are evident in our lives as you transform us from the inside out. We are becoming more loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and self-controlled through your power. Lord, we declare that we are being transformed into your image with ever-increasing glory, as it is written, and we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 We thank you that we are continually being transformed to reflect your glory more and more each day. In all these things, we give you thanks and praise, we declare your goodness, faithfulness, and transformative power over our lives. We thank you for the ongoing work you are doing in us and for the assurance that you will complete it. We trust in your process, knowing that you are making us more like Jesus each day. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.